are here down by the River Thames on a very cold and crisp early winter morning with Zach Purchase, who we last saw on Sports Vibe with his partner in cri crime, Mark Hunter, before they went off to the World Rowing Championships in New Zealand. Here he is back, job done, mission accomplished, gold medal achieved to add to his Beijing gold, of course, he won with Mark. Uh, so you must be a happy bunny, if indeed a cold bunny. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a shock coming back, I have to say, um, from the nice warm weather of New Zealand and then a holiday on a beach uh, to come back to these temperatures. I think this is our, our fifth day back this season. And um, so far, I've had as many clothes on as I can physically manage. And, uh, and it's all going all right, touch wood, so far. You've been down on the river uh, already, of course. And tell me, what was the state of the Thames at some ungodly hour this morning? Well, we were down on the, on the Lake of Caversham and uh, normally we have 2,000 metres to row on. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice sort of Olympic-sized course and uh, the first 1,000 metres was frozen and the last 250 metres was frozen. So to do all of our, all of our training on, uh, on a 750 metre loop, which is uh, a little bit short and a little bit repetitive turning around so many times, but we uh, got on with it and uh, we'll see what it's like tomorrow. Now, you must be happy because, you know, although you did win the Olympic title, that was two years ago and, and Mark went off to California for a year, took a bit of sabbatical. You ploughed on for a bit and then realised you needed a rest as well. So, you know, it's, um, you can't live on what you've done, can you? No, no, and it, I think it's really important to realise that although we've won this year, it wasn't, it wasn't an easy victory. We did a lot of hard work um, and even, you know, in one of the World Cups, we came fifth, our lowest, our lowest placing ever. We managed to turn that around, though, and, uh, and produce one of our, our best World Championships ever with our best preparation going into it. And, you know, that's what we've got to make sure that for the future we remember and uh, capitalise on. Well, uh, Zach, of course, what would any uh, uh, gold medalist do on a morning like this down at the Thames? Having had a row, he of course goes and grabs his saxophone. Well, you know, it's not the uh, not the usual combination. Usually, sports people have uh, you know a bit of exercise followed by um, Top Gear or something like that. You know, QI is what is one of my one of my afternoon indulgences. But every now and then, I can be found with a little bit of noise in my hands. So rather surreally, we do do surreal on Sports Vibe, and this is surreal. Uh, you're going to play us a little tune down here by the river. Do my best. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good indeed. Now, just tell us, I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't be a musician after all. You're, you're a clever chap. You do, you do more in your life than rowing. How did the saxophone come into your life? Um, well, I started playing at school, really, uh, around the same time I started rowing. And I took um, a grade each year until I left school. Now, why, why sax? Why, why, why not guitar? Why not? Uh, sax is quite cool, though, isn't it? Yeah, I, I've, uh, I don't know. I've, I've always I've quite liked it. I've quite liked the sort of throaty noise. Um, and there's sort of also a huge variety of different types of saxes you can get. Um, I've, I've played a few of them and, and settled on the alto as one of my favourite ones. It's a bit more portable than, than the big tenors and a bit, bit, sort of, bit more throaty than the, the sort of pitchy altos, so I'm, I'm sopranos. Now, those with decent memories, two years ago, BBC Sports Personality of the Year, we're almost upon, upon it again, and you, unbelievably, were the star turn. You played sax, didn't you, live to, oh, I don't know, nine million TV viewers? Yeah, it was uh, 15,000 people in the in the audience, and the official TV rating was 10.1 million, uh, which was, to be fair, terrifyingly scary. You know, it's, you can you can do sport as much as you like, and yeah, it's fine to line up on the Olympic start line. You practice for that, but I had a, a couple of months to to prepare for it, um, and it was actually my my fiance that sorted it all out for me. I I had no idea that it was all prepared and organised, and then she turned around one day and said, "Oh, by the way, you're play, playing with the BBC Orchestra." Um, in the Echo Arena in Liverpool, and it was an amazing experience, really, really good. So, I mean, okay, you've been on the start line to the Olympic finals. Yep. Compare that to uh, to what you had to do on the BBC. Well, um, on the start line, uh, there's no one watching. You're, you're in your own bubble, it's completely quiet. You don't have to stick to time cues or anything like that. You just go when the, uh, when the guy says go. Um, and then you do your best effort for six and a half minutes. Um, 
in, in Liverpool, it was a case of standing there with 15,000 people watching me, uh, the TV cameras, all of them around. Um, an amazing BBC orchestra to my right, um, Martin Koch, the, the conductor, really, really on top of his game, um, bringing everybody in, in time perfectly, and me having to hit that first note in time with everybody else, just to make sure it didn't go um, bad from the, from the word go. So listen, how, how good are you? I mean, what sort of grades did he get up to? Did he ever play in a band? Um, I left school uh, with a merit at grade 8. Um, grade 8? Grade 8. Well, that's, that's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah? <laughs> It's, uh, I really, really enjoyed it, um, and I got to the stage where I was doing a lot of sport and, um, and didn't really have time to, 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 to develop this any further. Um, when I retire, it'll probably be something I do a little bit more of. I might develop into a diploma somewhere. So, okay, you've got a, a dinner party. You can invite anybody you like. Okay, there may be Churchill or somewhere, but there may be, there may be Redgrave, because he's not been too bad, has he, in your sport? He's done, he's done all right from time. He's done all right. Saxophonist? Difficult one. I think I think for me it has to be it has to be Charlie Parker. Um, just just one. Uh, I, think, I think it's sort of a good bit of uh, variation. Um, everything really from the sort of the slow blues to the upright jazz, and um, and you know there'd be there'd be enough there rather than rather than, rather than some of the others. Okay, Zach. Well, um, next year World Champions again, presumably, uh, and then obviously the big one, 2012 Beijing. A lot of work to do, but so far everything's on course. Yep, five days into an eight-month season, and it's all going well. Uh, next year is the Olympic qualification year, where we've got to make sure we're in the uh, in the top eleven. I think it is. Um, fingers crossed, we'll be anywhere near eleven. Fingers crossed, we'll be more more like one. Um, but we'll just have to wait and uh, wait and see what uh, what other countries decide to throw at us. So, just a few weeks ago, you were winning gold in New Zealand. You've had what hardly any time off, and you're back again. The conveyor belt, it, it it's off and running, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's no rest of the wicket, as I say, and um, we're we're back in back in the gym, back on the water, back on the rowing machine, and it's all brilliant. I love every second of it. Of course you do. Well, it's only fitting that we end our time here in the cold by the Thames. The ducks and the swans have gathered around. Uh, please see us out with a bit of a tune. Thank <laughs> you.